Okay. Well, here is some financial information uh, for the toy company Mattel. And we're going to use this as an example of how to conduct a vertical analysis. A vertical analysis is also called common size analysis or sometimes proportional analysis. And it allows us to compare how specific items on the company's financial statements are changing in proportion to each other. And it's especially helpful when we're comparing two companies of different sizes and when we're comparing across industries. For a vertical analysis, all the items in the financial statement are expressed as the percent of a base item. So for income statements, the base item is usually total revenue. And for a balance sheet, it's usually total assets. And for a cash flow statement, the base number is usually cash flow from operations. In this case, we're going to build a simple vertical analysis with Mattel's balance sheet so that we can learn how to, an, a vertical analysis can be helpful. So to begin with then, the balance sheet base item is usually total assets and it is always expressed as 100%. Then all the other items on the balance sheet are expressed as percentages of the base item. So let's look specifically at how this is done. The base item is total assets and we're going to begin at the top of the balance sheet by calculating cash as a percentage of total assets. Cash as a percentage of total assets is 594 million divided by total assets of 5,243,000,000, and that gives us 11%. We do the same thing for accounts receivable. The base item is still total assets, and now we need to calculate the percentage for accounts receivable. It's expressed as a percent of total assets, so it's 970 divided by 5.243 billion, which would give us 19%. And if we move on to the other items on the balance sheet, we'll see that they're all calculated the same way, holding the base item always the same as total assets. And we can do this calculation for any number of years. You could add on 17, 16, and 15, and so on. Uh, and we can also do it for any financial statement. You can do the same vertical analysis for um, an income statement or a statement of cash flows. The only difference when you're doing a vertical analysis on the income statement is that the base item is total sales, not total assets. And for the cash flow statement, the base item is usually cash flow from operations. Now you can stop the video here uh, and try to calculate the percentages down this column for the rest of this balance sheet. And you can do the same for the balance sheet of the prior year. Okay, here's what I got. Each line is calculated the same way by holding the base item constant and expressing each account as a percentage of the base. So what does this tell us? Well, first we can immediately see some important relationships that maybe were not so obvious when we were just looking at the raw numbers. For example, we can see that current assets are 45% of total assets, which means that of all the things that Mattel owns, nearly half of it is expected to be consumed within a year. And we can compare this with a percentage of current liabilities at 24% and see that at this point in time, Mattel had nearly twice as much in current assets as it did in current liabilities. Another strong relationship that we can see immediately is the amount of debt that Mattel has in relationship to the amount of equity. Total liabilities are 87% of assets while shareholders' equity is 13%. And there are other relationships that we can point out as well. But you might be asking, well, okay, but are these proportions good or bad? And how, how do I know? So vertical analysis gets more powerful when we look at the same company over multiple years, or we compare a company with its peers in the same industry or to an industry average. So if we add just a few more columns of data and we lay out Mattel's balance sheet for four years instead of just one, well, what we get here immediately is a sea of numbers and it might be hard to tell what's happening. And we can look at accounts receivable that's highlighted here as an example, and we can see that the amount that Mattel was expecting to collect from its credit customers on December 30th of 2015, in the rightmost column, was $1.1 billion. And four years later on the same day, accounts receivable had decreased to only 970 million. So the question is, is, is this decrease important? Um, are they doing a better job maybe at collecting from their customers? Um, and while at first glance it's not necessarily obvious. With vertical analysis though, we can cut through this rather quickly. And instead of looking at the raw numbers, if we express these balance sheets uh, as a percentage of total assets in each year, 
uh, and we do each year the same way that we did it for 2018, um, we'll get some insights. Uh, so you can pause the video here and try it for yourself. Okay, so here's what I got. And looking again now at accounts receivable, you can see that as a percentage of total assets, AR really hasn't changed all that much. Um, in fact, in 2015, AR was 18% of, a, of total assets, and in 2018, it's 19%, so relatively the same. And the benefit of looking at a balance sheet like this is that we can see how the numbers are changing in proportion to each other. And as we scan down the common size balance sheet, we can see that most of the asset accounts have actually remained relatively the same in proportion over the past four years. And uh, there may be a small increase here in the proportion of assets that are held in property, plant, and equipment, which has increased from 11% of assets to 13. If we continue to scan down the balance sheet and examine liabilities, we start to see some more interesting trends. What's happening with other current liabilities? These have increased from 10 to 14% of assets, but the most alarming change on this balance sheet is, of course, the long-term debt. On December 31st, 2015, Mattel's long-term debt was 27% of total assets, and on the same day, four years later, long-term debt is more than half of total assets. This is a very significant change, and it should be the focus of our further analysis. And of course, because assets equals liabilities plus equity, with the big increase in liabilities, you can see the offset to this increase uh, reflected in shareholders' equity, which has fallen from 40% of assets to just 13. So vertical analysis, or looking at a common size statement of a firm, is especially, uh, especially over several years, uh, can reveal very quickly what's happening. And the same analysis can and should be done on the income statement and the statement of cash flows. Now, another way vertical analysis can be very useful is when we use it to compare one firm to another. In the case of Mattel, for example, we have seen that its debt has increased substantially from where it was in the past. And why is this? Is it because of there's been a secular shift in the toy industry and all toy makers are affected in the same way? Well, maybe vertical analysis can help us think about this. Uh, so for example, here are the balance sheets. Um, for Mattel at the end of 2018 that are side by side with the balance sheets for other major toy companies. And while Mattel makes Barbie and Hot Wheels, Hasbro is the maker of Monopoly, Spin Master makes Paw Patrol and Hatchimals, and Lego makes its famous uh, brick building sets. And we can see that looking at total assets, Mattel and Hasbro are roughly the same size with $5.2 billion of assets and are each about five times larger than Spin Master with just over $1 billion of assets. Now, what about Lego? Well, in raw numbers, its assets, the assets look quite small, don't they, uh, when they compare with the other companies here. But we can notice that while Mattel, Hasbro, and Spin Master are each expressed in thousands of US dollars, Lego's balance sheet is expressed in MDKK, or millions of Danish kroner. And Lego is based in Denmark, so that makes some sense. So especially when we're looking at a peer set of companies like this, where we have firms of different sizes and firms denominated in different currencies, vertical analysis can be very helpful because the focus of the analysis is in proportions and not on nominal values. So instead of, for example, taking time to translate Danish kroners into US dollars, we can just perform a vertical analysis and begin our examination of these companies without any reference to foreign currency markets and exchange rates. So here is the common size statement for the other companies. And we can quickly, for example, see that Mattel's accounts receivable is lower as a proportion of assets than the other companies in the industry. And now this is interesting because all of these companies are selling similar items to the same customers. So the question we would have here is, is Mattel being too tight with their credit terms relative to their peers? And how about inventory? Well, we can see that Mattel's inventory at 10% of total assets is right in line with the industry, which is between eight and 11%. We can also notice several other differences and similarities between Mattel and the other toy makers. For each of these, we can form a set of questions uh, to ask management or to look into with further analysis. 
inventory, for example, is not necessarily an area that we would spend a lot much more time on because we've already seen that Mattel's inventory has been stable over the past several years and it's right in line with the industry. But the reason we came here was to look at comparable peer companies in the same industry uh, was to further interrogate Mattel's rising debt. Uh, and with this view, we can see clearly that Mattel's long-term debt at 54% of total assets is materially higher than all other companies in our data set. In fact, Lego and Spin Master have no long-term debt and Hasbro's debt at about a third of its assets is roughly where Mattel was four years ago. So this is an example of how vertical analysis allows us to compare specific items on the financial statements that are changing in proportion to each other. And it's especially helpful when we're comparing companies of different sizes and across industries.